Since the beginning of this year, we have dealt with many unexpected events. The loss of life and income due to the worldwide pandemic has seriously affected the global community and economy. Earthquakes, fires, and floods in different parts of the world, as well as other weather-related disasters, have left people feeling helpless, hopeless, and brokenhearted, wondering if their lives will ever be the same. Let me tell you a personal story about brokenness. When our children were young, they decided they wanted to take piano lessons. My husband Rudy and I wanted to provide our children this opportunity, but we had no piano. We could not afford a new piano, so Rudy started looking for a used piano. That year for Christmas, he surprised us all with a piano, and through the years, our children learned to play. When our sons grew up and left the house, the old piano just collected dust, so we sold it. A few years went by, and we had saved some money. One day, Rudy said, I think it's time to get a new piano. I asked, why would we get a new piano when neither of us play? He said, oh, but he can, we can get a piano that plays itself. By using an iPad, you can program the piano to play over 4,000 songs, including hymns, tabernacle choir songs, all the primary songs, and so many more. Well, Rudy is a great salesperson, to say the least. We purchased a beautiful new player piano, and a few days later, two big, strong men delivered it to our house. I showed them my way where I wanted it and moved out of the way. It was a heavy baby grand, and to fit it through the door, they removed the legs and managed to put the piano sideways on top of a moving dolly that they had brought with them. Our house sat on a little bit of a slope, and unfortunately, earlier that day, it had snowed, leaving things wet and slushy. Can you see where this is going? While moving the piano up the little slope, it slipped, and I heard a big, loud crash. The piano had fallen off the moving dolly and hit the ground so hard that it left a big dent in our lawn. I said, oh my goodness, are you okay? Thankfully, both men were okay. Their eyes were wide as they looked at each other, and then they looked at me and said, we are so sorry. We'll take it back to the store and our manager will call you. Soon the manager was talking with Rudy to arrange the delivery of a new piano. Rudy is kind and forgiving and told the manager it was okay if they just repaired the damage and brought back the same piano. But the manager insisted, insisted that we would get a new one. Rudy responded saying, it can't be that bad. Just fix it up and bring it over. The manager said, the wood is broken, and once the wood is broken, it can never sound the same. You will get a new piano. Sisters and brothers, aren't we all like this piano, a little broken, cracked, and damaged, feeling like we will never be the same again? However, as we come unto Jesus Christ by exercising faith in Him, repenting and making and keeping covenants, our brokenness, whatever is cause, can be healed. This process which invites the Savior's healing power into our lives does not just restore us to what we were before, but makes us better than we ever were. I know that through our Savior Jesus Christ, we can all be mended, made whole, and fulfill our purpose, just like a beautiful sounding brand new piano. President Russell M. Nelson taught, where sore trials come upon us, it's time to deepen our faith in God, to work hard and to serve others. Then he will heal our broken hearts. He will bestow upon us personal peace and comfort. Those great gifts will not be destroyed even by death. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. To heal brokenness by coming unto him, we need to have faith in Jesus Christ. Having faith in Jesus Christ means relying completely on him, trusting in his infinite power and love. It includes believing his teachings. It means believing that even though we do not understand all things, he does because he has experienced all of our pains, afflictions, and infirmities. He knows how to help us rise above our daily difficulties. As we come unto him, we can be filled with joy, peace, and consolation. All that is hard and challenging about life can be made right through the atonement of Jesus Christ. He has counseled us, look unto me in every thought, doubt not, fear not. In the Book of Mormon, when Alma and his people were nearly crushed by the burdens placed upon them, the people pleaded for relief. The Lord didn't take away their burdens. Instead, he promised them, and I will also ease the burdens which are put upon your shoulders, that even you cannot feel them upon your backs even while you are in bondage. And this will I do, that ye may stand as witnesses for me hereafter, and that ye may know of a surety that I, the Lord God, do visit my people in their afflictions. And now it came to pass that the burdens which were laid upon Alma and his brethren were made light. Yea, the Lord did strengthen them that they could bear up their burdens with ease. And they did submit cheerfully and with patience to all the will of the Lord. Of the Savior's ability to heal and lighten burdens, Elder Tad R. Callister has taught, quote, One of the blessings of the atonement is that we can receive of the Savior's suckering powers. Isaiah spoke repeatedly of the Lord's healing, calming influence. He testified that the Savior was a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. Isaiah, to those, as those who sorrow, Isaiah declared that he, the Savior possessed the power to comfort all that mourn and wipe away tears from off all faces. Revive the spirit of the humble and bind up the brokenhearted. So expansive was his suckering powers that he could exchange beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Oh, what hope source in those promises! His spirit heals, it refines, it comforts. It breathes new life into hopeless hearts. It has the power to transform all that is ugly and vicious and worthless in life to something of supreme and glorious splendor. He has the power to convert the ashes of mortality to the beauties of eternity." Close quote. I testify that Jesus Christ is our loving Savior, Redeemer, the master healer and faithful friend. If we turn to him, he will heal us and make us whole again. I testify this is his church, and he is preparing to return once again to reign with power and glory on this earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.